Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 6th, 2017. And thank you, Tom H., for many of the links um, that I will be talking about today. And as usual, the description um, to all of the, um, the and down in the description box will be all the links that I talk about. So first up, Fox News text. NASA inflatable greenhouse could help feed astronauts on other planets. If we hope to someday inhabit other planets, astronauts will need more sources of nourishment than the packets of free dried space suit that can take space food that can take with them. It's not just the nutritional value of fresh produce. So to that end, NASA collaborated with researchers from the University of Arizona to design an inflatable greenhouse that can be deployed in space and offer astronauts a sustainable bounty of fresh vegetables. Now, actually, I looked at the link from it, and the NASA.gov site gives you even better information about it and some nicer pictures of it. But basically what they're working on is they're working on an inflatable greenhouse that they can first test in outer space and see what types of plants do best under what circumstances and uh, maybe get ready to do another test on the lunar surface if they have a, a small trial colony of uh, several astronauts on the lunar surface before they actually take this as something that could be taken and worked on Mars. So. It says, NASA scientists and engineers are developing systems to harness resources such as water that should be available in certain areas of the lunar or Martian surface to support missions lasting for months or years. A professor at the University of Arizona's Agriculture and Bio Biological Systems Engineering Department, Gio Camelli, Professor Gio Camelli explains that the next big step is to use additional lunar greenhouse units for specialized testing to ensure the system being developed will adequately support a crew of astronauts working on the moon or Mars. And next up from weather.com, Stephen Hawking predicts humans have 100 years to find a new planet. And he's promoting Mars too, and he's also promoting his new documentary, which has just a little bit to do with it in my opinion. But I'll read a couple paragraphs here. Renowned physicist Stephen Hawking has long held that humans only have 100 years to find a new planet. This summer, he will present his theory in a BBC documentary. According to the BBC, the documentary Stephen Hawking's Expedition New Earth will air as part of its Tomorrow's World season and will explore Hawking's theory that isn't as fantastical as it sounds. For years, the 74-year-old genius has warned that threats including climate change, destruction from nuclear war, and genetically engineered viruses put humankind in grave danger. Now, I think there's no small part of this that he's using this to promote his documentary, of course, uh, more than anything else. But I think the idea of getting a colony established on Mars and... Uh, is as good as soon as possible and especially the 100 year time frame because I think even at the soonest if everything goes fantastic and you don't have too many uh, glitches along the way it's going to take 30 or more years before you could even get it to the point to where it could be a sustainable colony and not have to actually have stuff sent from earth to help keep it going so uh, the, the sooner we can start the better at least in my opinion and last up from astronomy.com it seems like everyone has Mars on the mind these days. NASA wants to send humans to the red planet by 2030, and SpaceX wants to get there even sooner with plans to have people there by 2024. Mars is a favorite theme in Hollywood with movies like The Martian and This Year's Life, exploring what we might find once we reach our celestial neighbor. But most of them aren't addressing the big question. Once we get there, will we survive long term? And as you've read, you know, as you will read in these articles, if you do uh, bother to read them, Mars is actually a pretty decent environment for growing food because of the fact you do not need to have that much, you do not need to duplicate the amount of air pressure we have on Earth. Although the pressure is low on Mars, you could use an inflatable greenhouse and pressurize it, and you could pressurize it using the Martian atmosphere because it contains mostly carbon dioxide, which is what the plants like. So using these inflatable greenhouses and the right type of soil, I don't think this would be a problem at all. In fact, having smaller inflatable habitats is probably a good thing because any kind of problems you would have with uh, disease or any kind of disasters or something like that would only destroy a small portion of your food supply. Um, it's not like on Earth to where if a disease or a disaster hits a, a certain portion of a, of a farm or a certain amount of states or something like that, it can just keep on spreading and maybe wipe out all the crops on a continent or something like that. If you if you do the engineering right and keep it to little isolated individual greenhouse type of habitats, um, it's a lot safer and a lot uh, less prone to being uh, destroyed just because of some minor mishaps. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.